Do you think we're going to be in a, a bit of a world of hurt? Let's put it in, in different terms with, with this with this China trade deal. Do you think that actually there's going to be a real deal here? I think there is. I'm starting to think that actually, even even if there is a real deal, right. that that it's going to be that we're going to get into like a head fake situation where we're going to have a, a nice little spike if there's if there's sort of a, a photo op and everything, and then you know 72 hours later, if not sooner, there's going to be sort of a, a realization that maybe we're not where we want to be. That sounds painful, uh, no pun intended. But I think um, bottom line is our economy and China's economy just don't benefit from not finding a deal, right? I mean, China's economy is slowing down. Um, you know, Trump has said that March 1st is not a magical date now. So I think both parties are really willing to negotiate. And I think if they do, with regards to the market, you've got to be really concerned about a melt-up if your money's not invested already. So you think there's going to be a melt-up as a result of this? You, same, are you in the same place? Uh, you don't think it's already just baked in? No. No, well, there's further upside if, if a deal gets done. But we have to remember that the, the, the sort of the bones, the outline of a deal is going to be the, the more difficult issues, IP, technology issues, those aren't going to be settled. It, 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 there is a photo op aspect of it. But the fact is, is that, you know, when you come off the, the fourth quarter of last year, People are underinvested. People are continually nervous. And interest rates, importantly, remain right. low. That's fuel for upside in the market. Can you? We were talking about Theresa May and Brexit uh, and the issues going on over there. We talked about the, the German Bund and just how painful that situation is. Talking about pain, Mr. Mr. Payne over here. Is there anywhere in Europe right now you think you see value? Well, the reality is is that there's a lot of value in Europe. However, what you need to get is a little bit more clarity. And it, as we've seen, the market hasn't moved in the front of the The reason why clarity. you get value is when there's no clarity. Well, so it, you need to actually be able to see, see around corners, as they say. So, so essentially, investors are so soured on Europe that nobody wants to be the first to come in. Right. So we've, so got, March, we've got March 29th. The, the opportunity is developing. If you think about it from the fourth quarter, it's been bold enough to go into the U.S. market. Uh, so for us, when we look at the U.S., when we look at China and the potential for that market to turn, there's opportunity there. Do we think the opportunity is going to arise in Europe? We do. But the other question about Europe is how much of it is dependent on China re-stimulating to help backstop Europe. So you have two things going on solving Brexit or developing a story for Brexit and China flowing through to Europe. We do think eventually, though, but there is going to be time to buy Europe. Would you buy Europe now? Oh, I would, totally. I mean, you I, would. So you well, jump before he does. Well, bottom line is, right, when, once we know these things are settled, the opportunity is lost. And right now, you have a valuation gap that you haven't seen in a long time between the U.S. and Europe. It's like you've got to take advantage of that opportunity while you know, there's a lot of uncertainty. And I think that also plays back into the whole China deal. If that happens, that could be a huge catalyst for Europe. I'd hate for you to wait to put your money in later.